Is it really worth the extra cost to get the new M3 MacBook Air? Well, when Apple announced it, we had more than a few unexpected surprises. There were some new features we weren't expecting, which could really sway you to get one. But with that, Apple retired the tried and true iconic wedge-shaped MacBook that we've all grown to love or so we thought. It turns out that the beloved but aging M1 MacBook Air is now their $699 budget MacBook, which was rumored to come out this year. They didn't actually stop making it, but they made a deal with Walmart to start selling it to budget limited buyers. And it is a heck of a deal. So if you're trying to decide which one to buy or possibly if you should upgrade, here are all of the differences. And I'll go ahead and leave some links where you can pick up both of these for good prices down in the description below. Now on the outside, they look quite different. The iconic wedge shape looks very thin and it is at the palm side, but the M1 Air is actually thicker and it is also heavier than the slate-like M3 model. The footprint is actually slightly larger on the M3 because of its taller screen. And one of my favorite improvements is the MagSafe on the redesign, which allows you to still have two USB type C ports while charging. And those ports are Thunderbolt 4, so if you use a dock, it has better performance. With that, the M3 model now allows you to connect two external displays if you use it in clamshell mode compared to a maximum of one with the M1. Now, I have to point out that most people buying a basic laptop probably won't be doing a crazy desk setup. Because of that, with the M3, you can use a monitor like this, and this is the best way to boost your multitasking workflow with the Geminos dual monitor from our sponsor, Mobile Pixels, which is a game game changer for multitasking workflows, allowing me to drag and drop files and clips from the top display right into my video editing app on the bottom, all while taking screenshots on my MacBook, saving me time and money. And it's all stacked on a compact base, which saves desk space and comes with a bunch of extra ports. So check out the Geminos dual stack monitor using the links below. One thing I love about the M1 Air's wedge shape is that it doesn't dig into your wrists if you're doing a lot of typing, which can actually happen with the new design. But one disappointing part is the old 720p webcam if you do a lot of web conferencing. Honestly, even when it came out, the M1 MacBook Air's web cam didn't look that good and now that it's 2024 it definitely doesn't look great but at least the microphones sound pretty good and this is the m1 air 720 webcam in that same lower lighting situation definitely doesn't look good and this is the 1080p webcam with the M3 MacBook Air and its updated processing. It looks a lot better. The HDR over there in that light bulb looks a lot better. And here's how it looks in lower lighting situations like you might have at your house instead of studio lights. Now this webcam is placed in the notch, which some people don't like, but you're not actually losing any space because the 13 inch display is actually a little bit taller than the M1 Airs and your menu bar no longer takes up space in the 16 by 10 portion. With that, we also have a difference in speakers. The M1 Air has speakers on the sides, but they now on the new one fire upwards towards the display and we have four of them compared to just two. Go ahead and listen to the difference. Let me know your thoughts on this down below and if the webcam and the speakers matter to you. And the next thing I wanna talk about is battery life. The M1 Air was amazing when it came out and it is still just as good, but the M3 Air is now three nanometer and it has really powerful efficiency cores. So you can get about four hours more of real world mixed battery life, which can be really nice. And not only that, you can also fast charge it to 50% battery in just 30 minutes compared to over an hour on the M1 version. And in that time, the M3 Air will be almost fully charged. 
So this thing takes a lot longer to charge if that matters. Now, the M3 chip also has numerous improvements in performance. I wanna start out with the SSDs because we looked inside and Apple is now once again using two NAND chips, just like on the M1. So the M2 was the odd slow child and in write speed, they are close, but the M1 actually slightly beats it out. And the same thing goes for read speed. So we have three years later and the performance is the same. Now, in terms of single core performance, the M3 smokes it. This is the best that you can currently get. It is incredible. And in terms of multi-core, we have almost 12,000 compared to 8,600 or so. Um, so that is a good improvement. And this light fanless laptop will actually beat out M1 Pros and M1 Maxes. It is powerful. The issue comes in when we look at the score per dollar. Because the M1 is such a good price, you actually get better bang for the buck. But with that said, when you're using it, for example, web browsing, the M3 is quite a bit more snappy. It scores so much higher. It is so fast, so smooth. Now, I won't say that the M1 is slow because it's not. It's way faster than your old laptops, but we are starting to notice a difference. And now we have to talk about graphics because here we have a huge difference. In Geekbench 6's metal, we're looking at over 41,000 compared to 20 5,000. Uh, we have one extra graphics core, and of course, they're a lot more, uh, they have a lot higher performance. So this is an area, if you do push the graphics, you could be limited. Now looking at score per dollar, even though the M3 is a lot more expensive, you're actually getting better bang for the buck for that. Now, we also have a big difference in terms of the other technologies. Apple added in a bunch of new tech, including ray tracing. Now, if what you do supports this, like for example, Blender, the difference is massive. I mean, I'm talking about three times faster here. Um, that could be a crazy difference and it's actually more efficient, uses less battery life while doing so. Now, if you're somebody that codes, we do see a difference as well, but it's not as massive as for ray tracing tasks. So I would say if you're doing some simple starting to learn, I wouldn't care about waiting a little bit longer. Now, for those that do photo editing, our standard test here with 50, 42 megapixel edited raw images, the difference is isn't big, I'm talking about 12 seconds. And that is just because both of these have eight gigs of RAM. With 16 gigs, the M3 is almost twice as fast, a minute and three seconds, while the M1 with 16 gigs wouldn't have much of a difference. And that's because the M3 is just so powerful that it's actually being bottlenecked now with eight gigs. Now, for those of you guys that do video editing, um, if you're doing simple 4K with a few different titles, a little bit of effects, the performance is similar. And when you go to export, the time is actually identical because uh, the encoders are identical on both these. They're A14 based. Now, if you get into really high-end video editing, ProRes, you definitely wanna go with an M3, but not an eight gig model. You need to step up to a 16 gig uh, or more, so I don't wanna get into a ton of video editing, but for simple stuff, both of them do a great job. So with all that said, how much does it actually matter? Well, unless you do something that really needs the faster neural engine or the ray tracing, for most people doing regular tasks, the M1 is still enough. It is way faster than your older machine that you have, and you could still do photo editing and simple 4K editing. It's still smooth, you'll have a good experience. If eight gig and 256 gig of storage is the model that you would buy anyways, I really don't see a huge reason to go for the M3 unless you need some of those extra luxuries. At $699, the M1 MacBook Air is a steal of a laptop. If you already own one, I would ask yourself, where are you actually being limited or what would actually make a big difference for you? Now, if it's something that I did cover and you can afford upgrading, I would say, yes, it's worth it. This is a much newer, nicer machine overall. If you don't already have a Mac and you're buying a new machine, it is true that the M3 is more future-proof, but at the same time, if you're on a budget and that price difference matters and it's hard to stretch to spend the extra, I don't think you would do wrong by just getting yourself an M1 model 
especially if you're coming from an Intel machine and the retail value resale is still gonna hold well. So when you're ready to upgrade, you could still sell it and do so. So let me know your thoughts. Hopefully this video helped you guys to make a better informed decision. Go ahead and click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.